If you're shooting underwater video and your footage looks like this, you're messing up. But don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Hey guys, I'm Andy from Aquatic Images and today I'm going to show you how to get amazing color in your underwater images using only ambient light. So let me know if this sounds familiar. You're out on a dive shooting something that is colorful, vibrant and stunning. Can be marine life, can be the reef, whatever. And you got a real good feeling about the shot because your subject already looks so good to your eyes. The light is perfect, the sun rays are coming down just right. Then you look at it through your camera viewfinder and it looks like crap. It's too blue, it's too green and all the orange, yellow and red color is either just not there or it just looks nothing like what you can see with your eyes. Now this happens to everyone. It happened to me. The first few years when I started shooting underwater footage, all my shots came out way too green and nobody explained to me why. So what I'm going to do today is teach you how to get good and realistic looking colors from your underwater camera. And we're only using a built-in camera feature. This does not require you to spend any more money on gear. Which is good news, because if you already own an underwater camera setup, you probably spent too much money already. Now, quick disclaimer here, this will work on most cameras, but not all. And I'm gonna be talking about which cameras has this feature towards the end of the video. But regardless, I wanna say that even if your current camera setup does not support this feature, there will be a lot of useful information for you in this tutorial. Not just important, but quite essential if you're truly serious about capturing better looking underwater images. Just a quick warning, I'm gonna geek out quite heavily in this video and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about color and why cameras can't do it automatically. There are three ways of adjusting colors on the water. You can adjust your white balance, you can add a filter, or you can add video lights. For certain situations in cameras, a combination of these also works, like you can white balance while using a filter or you can white balance while using video lights. But for this tutorial, we're gonna focus on how to capture colorful videos using ambient light only. That's the light coming from the sun. So let's talk about sunlight. Sunlight doesn't travel through water as well as it does through air. What happens is water absorbs the color from the light, which travels at different wavelengths. So different color penetrate the water at different depths. This results in a loss of color the deeper you go. There are different factors at play here, such as sun intensity and water visibility. So the numbers we're gonna go through next are kind of at perfect conditions. Now let's start with the first color to go, red. Red penetrates about 10 meters, that's 33 feet for you Americans, into the water. Next up is orange at 20 meters, yellow at 35 meters, green at 45 meters, which leaves only blue. This is why images captured at very deep depths tend to look pretty much just blue. It's not that things aren't colorful down there, it's just that the wavelengths that are supposed to illuminate those colors doesn't reach that deep. When we learn to adjust for the loss of these colors on the water, our best reference point is what we can see with our eyes. Looking at your camera screen, the color should be a close match. So use your eyes or what you can see as a goalpost. So let's get to white balance. If you don't know what white balance is, it's exactly what it sounds like. The camera looks at a neutral color like white or gray and calculates the other colors based on that. For use on land, however, most cameras will auto-correct its white balance feature depending on the lighting conditions it's in. And most cameras do this quite accurately by themselves. There's auto features and there's also presets for different lighting conditions. So why doesn't this work on the water? Well, you might have guessed it, it has something to do with those colors disappearing. So the manual white balance feature works by showing the camera something that is white or neutral and therefore calculating the correct balance of the other colors. This is a feature that's used on land too, but underwater it's really the only accurate way we have for color correcting in camera. 
So instead of everything being heavily green or blue, you have more red, orange and yellow colors. Now, how do you actually set this up in camera? It's gonna be a bit hard for me to explain exactly where to look in your camera menus, because you know these companies like to come up with their own systems. However, on most camera systems, the symbol you wanna be looking for is this. So you need to dive into your menus. See what I did there? Look for the white balance options and try to locate either this symbol or something that says manual white balance. Next, you'll need to do the following. Find something that is white or gray while you're on the water. This can be most anything from neutrally colored dive equipment, white or gray cards, or something that you can find in your surrounding area, such as rocks or sand. Personally, I like the sand or rocks option, but I live in Southeast Asia where the majority of the dive sites are pinnacles or reefs. So plenty of places to white balance from. Also the camera system I use happened to work very well with that. But if I was trying to white balance in open ocean, I'd probably bring an 18% gray card. Once you've white balanced, take a look at your screen while pointing the camera away from the sun. Now this is really important because if you're pointing the camera towards the sun, the visibility will be reduced and the light will kind of be washed out, making it more white than blue. So it will make it really hard to see if you've actually nailed the colors. So turn yourself away from the sun and if what you're seeing through your viewfinder is similar to what you can see with your eyes, congratulations, well done. You've nailed it. Good job. If it still looks quite not right, try the following. You always want to white balance towards the sun. That way you avoid casting a shade over the area that you're white balancing from. So you want to go like this, white balance towards the sun, then spin 180 degrees and check what it looks like away from the sun. Now, remember what I said about different colors penetrating the water at different depths? So what do you think happens if we go deeper? We lose more color. Generally, I say do this once for every three to five meters. However, you need to give this a go yourself and see what works for you. You might also notice that the colors will change if say the sun goes behind a cloud or you're diving for quite a long time at the same level. So you'll need to do this quite regularly. Also, guess what happens if you start to go shallower? You'll get an excess of red, orange and yellow colors and you'll need to recalibrate that as well. However, with lots of practice, you should be able to just look at your camera screen and know if you need to redo your white balance. Now, another issue you might encounter is filming subjects that are above you and getting lots of unwanted red color, particularly in the highlights. Now, remember that our goal is to obtain the same look in camera as what we can see with our eyes. The reason why this happening is because you're essentially pointing the camera towards a shallower area of the dive where there's more red and orange colors. You can fix this quite easily if your camera has multiple manual white balance presets. So for example, on my Panasonic GH5, I can save up to four different manual white balance presets. So I always have at least one preset saved at a very shallow depth, like between one and three meters. That way, if I'm down deeper, I can quickly switch over to this white balance and get a more natural looking color. If your camera only have one manual white balance preset, you can do what I used to do on my old 7D system, which is to switch over to the daylight preset, which is approximately 5600 Kelvin. That works okay. You can also experiment with setting up custom Kelvin temperatures if your camera has that feature. But if your camera do have multiple presets, it also works really well for the beginning of the dive. So if you have a manual white balance preset set to a shallow level from a previous dive, that is definitely the best way to go. I find it's really helpful if I see something that I want to shoot just in the beginning of a dive. This method won't give you 100% accurate results, but it's the best solution I found and it gets you close enough for those situations. Now another thing to consider is your distance to the subject. So what happens with light that travels through air again? The water absorbs the color from the light. If you've been free diving or scuba diving, you might have noticed this yourself. You'll see a coral reef from several meters away and it looks kind of bland, but as you get closer, the colors look really healthy and vibrant. So in other words, if you're far away from your subject, the color might not be as clear or accurate as when you're closer to that subject. So if you're not happy with how the shot looks from far away, get closer. But Andy, I want to capture the whole scene with stunning colors. 
That's what wide lenses are for and we're going to talk about those in another video. Now earlier we mentioned video lights, which are basically just lights built for underwater. So you might be thinking, why not just use lights all the time? There are indeed some shots that do look better this way, particularly close-ups, or if you're shooting something with powerful lights from a distance. However, generally when it comes to shooting at a distance or capturing moving shots with either you or the subject moving, I find a proper white balance to be the best alternative. This goes double for me because I love being on the move while shooting, so that's why I'm so crazy about shooting in ambient light. Now some cameras are better than others when it comes to having accurate underwater colors. There's a few deciding factors to this, such as camera brand's color science, the accuracy of the manual white balance feature, the Kelvin range, and the size of the sensor. So for some cameras, the only real option is to use a red filter or a magic filter. Like I mentioned earlier, some cameras need to white balance when using a filter. There can be several reasons to this, but the main culprit is the Kelvin range. To have accurate underwater colors, you need to have a camera that can go into the high 50,000s of the Kelvin temperature scale. Most action cameras and lower end or older compacts are normally capped at around 10,000 Kelvin. So for these cameras, we can split them into two categories, those that can manually white balance and those who can't. If your camera can't manually white balance, you're gonna have to use a filter and hope for the best. You won't be able to control your colors because there's no settings that allows you to do so. However, if your camera can white balance, you still have that creative control that we talked about earlier. So are there any drawbacks to using filters? It depends a bit on the filter system. Some of them are attached directly to the lens inside of the camera housing. Hence, once you go diving, you can't remove it. Now, I like to shoot stuff like split or surface shots. And if you have a red filter on your camera for that, that will just mess it up. Other cameras have what's called wet filters, which are filters that attach to the outside of your camera housing. Action cameras are a good example of this. So with these cameras, you can remove the filter at any time. Just be careful not to lose them. Now let's talk about some of the most popular cameras for underwater video and how they stack up using ambient light. You ready? Here we go. GoPro needs red filter. Osmo Action needs red filter. Olympus TJ4, 5 and 6 needs red filter. Sony RX100 up to the Mark V needs red filter. Sony RX100 Mark VI and 7 getting better may not need red filter. Sony A series up to the Mark IIs might need red filter. Sony A series since the Mark III's smooth sailing. Canon G and S series compact cameras no red filter. Canon DSLRs and mirrorless cameras no filter. Panasonic GH5, GH5S and the S1 cameras no filter. Panasonic LX100 Mark I and II no filter. Nikon mostly all right, but who shoots video with Nikon? As I mentioned before, there are other factors that determine accuracy of underwater colors and nobody does it quite like Canon. So to sum it up, the manual white balance feature is critical if you're truly serious about shooting underwater video. Underwater color is everything and it's the first thing that I personally notice when I'm watching other people's work. If the colors are off, I just feel like the image isn't reaching its full potential and as we've covered in this video, Correcting that isn't all that difficult. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments below what kind of underwater camera system you're using and how you like it. Also, if you have any more questions about underwater videography, drop them in the comments below. Please also consider subscribing to us for more underwater content in the future. Now go check out this video I did with my Canon 7D, that's a 10 year old camera, just to show you that there's no excuse on getting good colors on the water. That's it for me, I'm going diving.